Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. entitled Bring Back a Mig, an intriguing true story of an amazing adventure in Korea. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... The music in the background is recognizable to anyone as the song of the United States Air Force. Its words ring with the mighty story that began in the era of the flying flivers and continues in the modern jet age. Newer planes mean newer techniques, which in turn must be taught to the new generation. Here is your opportunity, young men of America, and a chance to strengthen the defense of the nation as part of the great Air Force team. Enlist now in the Aviation Cadet Training Program. You have the preliminary qualifications if you are between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half and have had at least two years of college. Inquire today at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Ask about the Aviation Cadet Training Program. Now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Bring Back a MiG. The order was seven words long, but if it could be carried out, an important battle would be won. It was a grim command, but it was vitally necessary. At any cost, bring back a MiG. Bring back a Russian jet-built fighter for study, analysis, and evaluation. That's what they wanted, and the news of it came sifting down. Sorry I'm late. I just got here myself, sir. Yeah. Not much of a place to hold a conference on a night like this. <laughs> well, it's cold as an icebox and black as a pit. So we shouldn't be disturbed. All right, sir. You've been uh, temporarily assigned to my command. Uh, you know that? Uh, yes, sir. That's what the chief said. Well, I've got a tough job for you. Well, they're all tough, sir. I guarantee this one will be the toughest of all. How soon can you be ready to leave for the States? States? Did, did you say States, sir? I did. Well... You're going back to school. You'll be spending Christmas in New England. And you said this was going to be tough? It's uh, one of those things that starts out easy, son. I've been put in charge of a detail. Before daylight, you're on your way. You're flying east, east and home. Christmas in New England. You should be used to sudden changes by now, and this is one you'll have a little time to think about. The first part of your job is going to be no pain at all. Like the general said, you're going to school. Not one school, a half a dozen, maybe more. 
You'll be the only student because the schools you're going to are factories. And the subject, jets. Uh, this is Mr. Rowe. Fred here knows more about what goes on in this plant than I do. Uh, how do you do, sir? How do you do? Uh, afraid I didn't get your name. Oh, just call me Jim. Uh, Jim was uh, sent up from Washington, Fred. His name is important. Oh, I see, I see. Well, I guess I better let you ask all the questions. I'll have about a million. Well, uh, I gotta rush off now. You need anything, you just holler. But I'm sure you're in good hands. Oh, thanks for everything, Mr. Carr. You're welcome, I'm sure. See you later. Bye. So long. Well, shall we start? Right. First off, we'll stop in my office and pick up... As the days pass, your proficiency grows. Under the guidance of experts, you finally reach the point where you could actually field strip a jet flighter blindfolded. Just as easily as you could field strip a rifle. Like the boss said, you spend Christmas and New Year's in New England. And then one day, school is out. You've learned all there is to know on the subject. It's time to put your knowledge to work. Uh, welcome home. Have a good trip? Fast, sir. Oh, this modern age. How were things back in the States? Back in the States? So oh, peaceful. <laughs> I'll bet. Oh, pull up a chair. Thanks. The two copter pilots will be here in a few minutes. I see, General. You've uh, definitely decided on a helicopter for the job. Yes. Your idea of going in alone and trying to steal a MiG right in front of their noses is <laughs> all right for the movies. But the chance is too slim, and uh, well, we'd be right back where we were when we started. Well, General, have we got a chopper big enough to handle the thing? The Sikorsky H-19 is the biggest we've got. Uh -huh. And it's got to be big enough. Oh, uh, there'll be nine of you all told. Two pilots, six technicians, and yourself. Right. Your pilots are the best we've got. Well, that's good. Joe Cooper flew B-24s during the war. Switched to helicopters about... Four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. Russ Winnegar has a similar background. Well, they know their stuff. I see. Well, do they know about this deal yet? No, no. They'll hear about it for the first time when they get here. Mm -hmm. uh, what about the other men? Well, we've already picked them and trained them. Well, they'll be handy to have around in case we run into trouble. <laughs> I don't see how you can expect to run into anything else. Oh, you never can tell, sir. We might not. Uh... Come in. General? In here, Captain. Is Captain Winnegar with you? Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Man, this is Jim. He's one of those cloak and dagger birds, so his last name isn't important. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if his first name wasn't Jim at all. <laughs> <laughs> I never could figure why you men had to act so mysterious about your name. Well, we have to have some secrets, General. <laughs> <laughs> Meet Captain Joe Cooper and Captain Russ Winnegar. All right, Captain. They're good at keeping secrets. Well, I do. Sir. Well, uh, sit down, gentlemen, when we get down to cases. <clears throat> While the general briefs the two pilots, you have a chance to look them over. Cooper is tall, thin, thoughtful-looking bird, quiet, dependable guy, you figure. No monkey business. Calm in the pinch. Winnegar is short, compact, with a chin like a hunk of granite. He looks rugged, ready for anything. You have a feeling the general handpicked these men. Cooper listens to the plan unfold, betraying no emotion. Winnegar's eyes light up like a couple of searchlights. There's no hiding his eagerness. He's ready to go right now. Now, uh, as long as that helicopter of yours delivers a MiG in our hands, we'll be satisfied. You know, there are those who think it can't be done. How about it? Well, the overload will be tremendous, but we'll get our copter back and with your MiG. I think. You spend the next couple of weeks putting to work the schooling you went home for, teaching Joe and Russ and the technicians how to disassemble a jet with portable tools in a hurry. You practice loading the big H-19 with jet parts. Joe and Russ do things with that baby that don't seem possible. And then one day, all that is left to do is wait. 
Wait until photo reconnaissance spots a MiG down somewhere in one piece. You hope when they do, it won't be too far behind enemy lines. How many years you figure we gotta wait before that phone rings? <laughs> oh, five, maybe ten. Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. Ah, uh, relax, boy. Say, how about some penny ante? Sir, I do not believe in gambling. Sir, this isn't gambling. I'll take your money gently. In that case, deal me in. <laughs> well, who's got a deck of cards? I got one in my footlocker, I think. I'll take a... No cards today, children. Well, shall I answer it or uh, let it ring a while? Look, if you don't answer it in one second, I'll feed it to you. Now, go on, <laughs> answer it. The man's eager. Hello? How soon can you be in my office? In about 30 seconds. Make it 25. Think we've got something for you. We're on our way, sir. It's right here, sir, on the side of this hill. Oh, oh. According to this map, the, uh, the whole area looks pretty hilly. Hmm. What about it, Joe? Oh, isn't this a clearing right here? Mm. That's right. I uh, I think you could put it down there, all right. You ought to be about a hundred yards from the mig. Mm-hmm. What uh, what kind of shape is it in, Glenn? Looked reasonably intact. Nose was kind of dented in, but she seemed to be all in one piece. She's two hundred miles behind their line. Glenn, uh, did you notice any activity in the immediate vicinity? No, oh, the place looked empty, sir. Good. How far inland is she? Well, let's figure it out. 10, 18, 24, 35. Now, this island here off the coast is set up for your advanced fuel base. Mm, good idea. Yeah. From there, you can fly along the coast uh, until you reach this point. Mm -hmm. You'll have protective cover all the way. Well, the more, the better. When do we start? Now. It'll take about an hour to get your cover in position, and uh, your flight time to the island is about the same. Yeah, should work perfectly. Well, we'll grab some chow, gather the other lads, and be on our way. Oh, who wants to eat? You got a point there. <laughs> well, when you want it, the food's there. Package rations were put in the helicopter as part of the advanced preparations. There's uh, only one point I've got left to make. Yes, sir. Bring me back that MiG. Bring it back in 50 parts or 100. I don't care what it looks like when you get it here, but just get it here. Even though you know you should eat, you find that food seems to stick in your throat and that an empty stomach can be emptier no matter what you try to put in it. Inside enemy lines doesn't sound like a hop, skip, and jump. And in an overloaded helicopter, crammed with men, MiG parts, and extra fuel, it means you're a sitting duck for anyone within that area who wants to take a pot shot at you. Well, the three of us eat silently, hurriedly, forcing the food down our throats. Then we go out into the bitterly cold afternoon and walk stiffly across the field to the grotesque-looking H-19. You know, there's only one thing that worries me. Yeah? What's your worry, Joe? Our extra gasoline, the nylon bags we're carrying it in are all interconnected. A burst of flack in one bag, they'd all go dry. I know, but there's not much we can do about it. No, just hope it doesn't happen. Why, fellas, you don't think they'll shoot at us, do you? Why, they'll be so surprised to see us, they'll just stand with their mouths open. <laughs> hey, I see the six men are ready and waiting. Uh, those guys are the only thing that make me feel good about this trip. Now, Russ, uh, you check their chutes, and I'll look after the extra ammunition situation. We're not going to have much room for extra ammo. Oh, just a few grenades. Oh, brother, it's cold. I'd rather have it too cold than too hot. All of a sudden. In a matter of minutes, everything is checked. The nine of you are aboard and Joe revs her up. Rise straight up off the ground, slowly, almost sluggishly. Then Joe points her toward the sea, and you're on your way. The ugly, soiled earth of Korea moves away under you. 
The lip of the Yellow Sea froths against the shoreline as though it would like to give the whole country a good cleaning. The day is gray, overcast. Visibility, poor. You come down low over the sea, heading for the island where you'll find your extra fuel. Joe, there's the island. Just to the right over there. See it? Oh, yeah. I hope this visibility isn't getting any better. Hey, is that the island off there? Yeah. Yeah, you can see it a little better now. Not much more than a rock sitting in the sea. Russ, give the boys overhead a call, will you? Tell them we're going down to gas up. Right. Green leader. Green leader. Meatball calling green leader. Go ahead, Meatball. Going down to get a drink. Stick around. It'll only be a minute. Roger, Meatball. Bless you, boy. Bless you. Okay. Going down. Listening to the proudly we hail production, Bring Back a Mig. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. Hey, that's one of those new Air Force jets. It must be some fun to be up there. Gee, I'd sure like to fly when I grow up. Young men of America, yesterday you said it. Today, you can make it come true. Today, the United States Air Force is offering you the opportunity to apply for the Aviation Cadet Training Program and become an important part of America's jet age. You'll be given the finest training possible and graduate as a fully qualified pilot, navigator, or radar observer. What a thrill to wear those silver wings that identify you as a member of the United States Air Force flight team you'll feel a real surge of pride when you're assigned to your plane. Perhaps it'll be a speedy F-94 Scorpion jet or the vital flying boxcar cargo plane. No matter what your job in the Air Force, you, as an aviation cadet, have the satisfaction of knowing that you're serving your country when it needs you most. If you're a young man between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have successfully completed two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, you should visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Bring Back a MIG. Where's our gas? Hey, fellas, look. Look over there. Holy jumping catfish. Oh, we got to get out and make a stand. Oh, it's too late. Too many of them. One of those grenades. Right. Hey, you guys, they're reds. No, no, no. They're not reds, Russ. They're our men. Huh? Hey, you see? They're waving. Oh, brother. I thought we'd had it. In spades. Come on. Let's get out and get loaded up. With the help of 50 grinning South Korean Marines, whom you first mistook for commies... You load and refuel the helicopter in jig time. Helicopter in jig time. Now you're ready for the final run. Hey! Hey, what's the matter? We're overloaded. She won't behave. Oh, isn't that just dandy? Well, come on, get moving. Let's lighten the load. Have to lighten it quite a bit. Everybody take off their parachute. And one of the technicians will have to wait here for us. Even with no shoots and one less man, you're still overloaded. Suddenly, something flashes overhead and you look up. The sky is full of planes. The regular umbrella of shooting stars, saber jets, and mustangs. They look mighty comforting. And you hope they'll stay there all the way in and back. 
But you waddle along through the air, hugging the coastline, and then it's time to rise up and cross the hills and find what you've come looking for. I'm leveling off at 5,000. Did you handle better now? Yeah, much. Check that map, will you? See if you can pick out anything interesting. I studied that map until I could see it in my sleep. Yeah, you're on the right course. There's the river with a fork in it off to the right. Uh Uh-huh. The three hills grouped together there. And that blasted factory on the edge of the town. Uh Uh-oh. Here comes some ground fire. Where's the big from here? Other side of that ridge up ahead. Boy, I can't figure out why someone hasn't shot us down yet. Well, like you said, they're just too surprised. You gotta pull that mega apart in ten minutes. It says here. Well, with seven of us working on it and Joe looking after the ship, we should be able to do it. As long as they don't jump us. Look, over there. There she is. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anyone around here. Tell the boys up there we're going down. We found our MIG. Now all we have to do is cart it home. One thing above all else you want now is silence. But the only thing a helicopter won't do is land silently. Your engines sound like a flock of fire trucks in full tilt as you let down into a clearing about 400 yards. And over a hill, the MIG. You sit tensely, hardly daring to breathe, expecting to be raked by fire from behind every rock and tree. Then, your wheels touch the ground. Come on, boys. Let's go get it. All right, Sergeant. Post one of your men on those rocks. The rest of you start working on the tail section. Hey, Russ, you take the nose. I'll take the cockpit. Let's hit it! Now what you learned in school and what you've taught the rest of these men had better pay off. You don't need the whole MIG but you do need everything that makes it tick. Gun sight, armor around the pilot, metals used in the engine's fire blast chambers, and so on. Then it happens. You run into trouble right off. Hey, I don't have the right kind of tools to get this thing off. None of them fit. Hey, sir, we're trying to remove the tail, but our tools... Yeah, I know, I know. Be sure to get that whole tail section. Fine kettle of fish. What are we going to do? We're going to stop standing around beating our gums. Get off everything you can. Now let's hurry it up. You disassemble as much of her as you can, which isn't much. Now it's time to improvise. You've got to get this thing apart one way or another. I've gotten off everything I can. Right. Right. Now, you and the sergeant and the rest of the boys start carting that stuff back to the ship. Okay. Hey, what are you going to do with that grenade? Well, if we can't take her apart, we'll blow her apart. Now, get going. Joe! Hey, Joe! Yeah, what's the matter? I got trouble. This is all we could get off her. You can't possibly carry anymore. Well... Hey, they're on to us. No, no, that's that's Jim. He's breaking the plane up with grenades. Grenades? Won't he blow it all to bits? Stop worrying about him. He knows his business. All right, I'm going back to help him. Sergeant, as soon as we get this loaded, come on the double. What tools won't do, hand grenades will. It's not the neatest way to take a plane apart, but it does the job quickly, and right now, every second is about a million dollars in borrowed time. When Russ and the others come back, you've got one broken-up MIG on your hands. Now all you've got to do is cart it back to the helicopter and get it aboard. Hey! How you coming? Well, it's all done. Look, you two men take that section. You two that one. Russ, you and I will take this. Okay! Put your backs into it. It takes two trips to get all the pieces down to the H-19. And then it takes the greatest piece of loading anyone's ever seen. When you're through, the tail of the MiG sticks out the cabin window like an extra wing. 
You throw away your tools, weapons, anything to lighten the load. Then you crawl into the helicopter the best you can and hope that a guy named Joe Cooper is a magician because you know it'll take one to get this show into the air. Well, here we go. I hope. Come on, baby, let's walk upstairs. Heave her off, boy. We're going up! We're going up! I can't make the hill ahead. Have to head downwind. Hold on. Whee! It's just like flying. Hey, look out! Those trees ahead! Yeah, get ready to pick the bark out of your teeth. Oh, brother, we got shrubs in the landing gear. Slowly, the altimeter's finger marches from one to two to three. And finally, at 5,000, you level off and head for the sea. Then what you've been expecting all along, but hoping against hope wouldn't happen, does happen in a big way. Black! Concentrating on us! Well, you didn't really think they'd let us get away with a cargo like this that easy, did you? No, but any I... closer we'll be able to get out and walk on it. Their aim's pretty sharp today. Wow! Better not get any sharper. Take us out to sea, Skipper. Away from all this noise. You were lucky they didn't open up on you sooner. Uh, we were just lucky, General. Yeah, they had our range all the way out to the sea. We found one hunk of flak in the main rotor blade. Gentlemen, you've done a magnificent job. And I think the most remarkable thing you've done is bring yourselves back alive. Well, did we get enough of that MIG to help anyone? You certainly did. You risked your necks to do this job, and you can bet there are going to be an awful lot of necks saved because of what you did. I'm recommending you, Captain Joe Cooper and Captain Russ Winnegar, for the Silver Star. America is depending on her leaders in the air. If you're a young man between the ages of 19 and 26 and a half, have had two or more years of college and are otherwise qualified, you are eligible to join the ranks of America's leaders in the air. You can become an aviation cadet. The defense of our nation hangs heavily on our air strength, the finest in the world, but we cannot relax our efforts. The Air Force still needs pilots and aircraft observers. If you have the primary qualifications, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Ask about the Aviation Cadet Training Program. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Bureau for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>